The women of TLC, t Lisa Left Eye Lopez in Chile. Rosanda. Now, just so you know, these women, all three of them, almost simultaneously, they all filed for bankruptcy. They did that in 1995. Now, let me tell you why they did that. Because they spent money, and they spent lots of money. You remember the time where TLC was at the awards and announced that they don't make any money, and, you know, they're not paid properly? Remember that? It's not really that that you want to focus on. It's what they didn't tell you, which is what's called expenditures. You see, they left that out of their speech. Let's talk about the expenditures. Clothes, houses, cars. They were spending TF amounts of money. All three of them. You got to remember, TLC was from the beginning of the 90s. TLC had done millions of album sales from the beginning, the very beginning of the 90s. And then you remember when they hit Crazy Sexy Cool came out, remember? A lot of people thought Crazy Sexy Cool was their third album, but it wasn't. It was their second album. It's their biggest selling album of all time. Sold like 23 million copies worldwide. Sold like 15 million in the United States. Now, if y'all don't know it and nobody told you, let me be the one to tell you. Let the real Mike Wilson tell you. It was the credit lines. All three of them had huge credit lines. Yeah, I know, I know. Chili will come on there and she'll do interviews and she'll play everything close to the vest. But, uh uh-uh. She was blowing through money, blowing through expenses because... They were extended credit lines. Lisa Left Our Lopez was extended credit lines. It didn't really matter about the money. Right, I mean, you know, money coming in, money going out. These women were worldwide. Everybody knew who they were. They were global. So, what they do? They maxed out their expenses. All three of them. 93, 94, 1995. All three of them maxed out their expenses. Did you ever find it coincidental that they all three filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy? At the same time, come on now. These are three independent women that are part of a music group. Why would they all three file for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy at the same time? Let me tell you why. Because after all three were done smashing the gas on their credit lines, they Dumped it all in bankruptcy court. Now you know that had to be part of the plan. That's done by design. We learned that years later when people started just using bankruptcy. See, bankruptcy was always supposed to be, you know, unexpected, not part of the plan. But come on. How would TLC these women individually all come together in 1995 and just 
dump everything. Can you imagine the credit lines, the creditors? Do you think these three women didn't forget to add everything? When the bankruptcy attorneys put these women together and they said, everything you list that you owe, we're going to dump it in bankruptcy court. Don't forget to put anything. Make sure you put everything that you owe on your lines of credit. Now, you know, just with any other woman, they going to add everything on it. They're not going to miss anything. Because you dumping it. Right. I mean, you, yeah, you dumping it in bankruptcy court. So nobody misses that. They load it up. They put all of their maxed out expenditures. They turn it in and they just dump it in bankruptcy court. And then it starts over again. So in that regards, I mean... Yeah, that's how the game went. But did the music industry ever explain that to you as the fan? That they did that by design? No, you're only getting that from me. The real Mike Wilson is explaining it to you. They they did it by design and a lot of other people were doing it by design. After the bankruptcy got discharged... Take yourself a little bit further to 1999. What do these three women do? They come back together and they drop fan mail. You remember that album called Fan Mail, right? That was the second largest album sales in in all their time in the music business. Nothing ever touched Crazy Sexy Cool. But fan mail still hit. Fan mail did like six, seven million copies. That's after they had already come out of the bankruptcy. So anyways, I'm going to go on now to the year 2000. Look at what Lisa Lopez does in 2000. Remember fan mail came out in 99. In 2000, Lisa Lopez starts doing independent features on all these people's albums. She jumping on this album. She jumping on that album. She's jumping on on this album. She's jumping on uh, Singer Maya's album, on her Mood Ring album. She's making an appearance on that song. She's making an appearance on this song. So even after fan mail dropped in 99, I mean, it's obvious to see that Lisa Lopez knew that she wanted to go a different direction. She wasn't going to be with TLC anymore. But a lot of people didn't know that she started, you know, being featured on so many other songs. And then, of course, uh, in 2002 is when she signed with death row records right that's when she signed with Suge Knight uh right before her untimely passing but anyways I'm about to get out of here I just wanted to drop that on y'all so that you realize what was the purpose of the 1995 bankruptcy where TLC uh, individually dumped all of their expenditures. Their lines of credit were huge. They had lots of lines of credit. They, yeah, it wouldn't have been anything for Lisa Lopez to spend fifteen grand a day. You know, at a department store, it wouldn't. Yeah, she had lines of credit, but as they were as they were maxing out their lines of credit. Coincidentally, it followed up with a bankruptcy in 1995. So anyway, I'm about to go to bed. You know how it is. getting kind of cold out here in Houston. Show me some love with a subscribe. Show me some love with a subscribe. R.I.P. Lisa Left Eye Lopez.